everyone! Hello, 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 hello. I hope you're all good. Today we're going to be doing my June wrap up. I feel like for me, June was a bit of like a reading month. It was very meh. It was very blah. It wasn't bad. I read quite a bit. I think it was like in terms of how much I read my second highest reading month this year. But I don't think I read like many great books. We'll go into all my stats, we'll do that now first, and then we'll go into like the individual reviews for each of the books. So in June I read a total of nine books, which is one less than I read last month. So not the Shablam. I was hoping for after finishing uni, but I was like seeing family, I was making more videos, so I think it's a fine number. Sure Jan. I read 3,001 pages, which averages out to about 100 pages a day, which is always my goal. At least 100 pages a day on average is something that I'm happy with. I don't read 100 pages every day. Some days I'll read none, some days I'll read like 400, you know, it's completely random. This also gave me an average book length of 329. I actually read a lot of like 400 and something page books this month and then I think I read like an 80 page book and a 100 page book and they brought the average down quite a lot and my average rating was 3.38 that is the second lowest average rating I've had so far this year for a month so like I said I read a fair amount but I didn't have many new favorites um <laughs> it's a bad. I'm at breaking point I read one five star, one 4.5 star, two four stars, two three stars, two 2.5 stars, and one two star. So like at the end there, we're a bit, we're a bit bottom heavy in terms of our average ratings. In terms of genres, I read one contemporary, three fantasy, one historical, one mystery, one non-fiction and two thriller. Fantasy is definitely my most read genre, but I, I don't feel like I've had a ton of success with fantasy so far this year, really, like in terms of number, in terms of like sheer numbers of what makes up my highest rated. Five I read were YA and four were adult. It is pretty much always like a 50-50 split between those two for me. So in terms of how I acquired the books, four were gifts, one was a book I'd previously bought myself, two were from publishers, one was from Scribd, and one I got in a book box. Six I read were standalones, and three were part of a series, which I'm happy with because my reading has definitely been series heavy, I think, this year. In terms of my reading for the whole year, 54.3% of what I've read has been from series, so I'm happy that this was a bit of a month where I read some more standalones. Uh, a lot of the time I've been starting a lot of series, I need to finish series. Yes, you do. No, I yes, don't. you do. I think I'm gonna tonight. I'm gonna make a series spreadsheet of all the series I'm currently reading, so I can visually see it. Because I do have a category on Goodreads, but it's not as visual as I'd like it to be. So that's my plans tonight. If anyone is wondering, it's so exciting. I know. <laughs> In terms of author race, a lot of you know I'm trying to read over 50% non-white authors. I didn't do well with that this month. I read from three black authors and six white authors. It was something I was very conscious of throughout the month, but it just in terms of the videos I was doing, that's just how basically it fell. So that's something I definitely want to try and rectify it next month. And then in terms of author status, one was a debut, two authors I'd read before, and six authors were new to me, which is always fun. Let's get into the individual books. I will say one is not in any reading vlog, and one is in a reading vlog that hasn't come out yet. Seven of these books do have full reading vlogs for them, so I'm gonna try. I always just say the same things. I'm like, do you guys really want to listen to this? I suppose you do, but <laughs> if you want like really in-depth thoughts where I talk about these books like 10 minutes on their own and take you through the journey of me reading them, I will link and I'll tell you all of, all of the vlogs these are in, basically, if you want to go check these out. So the first three books I read were in a vlog where I basically tested whether I preferred books with similar characters to me in them because I've never understood when people are like I want to relate to my characters. First was Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rodderson and I gave this 2.5 stars. I know. You've been very very harsh. Nice to meet you. Kelly. Kelly Arsh. This is a standalone fantasy which I really do enjoy. I feel like we don't have enough standalone fantasies. Everything needs to be a five book series. I'm like girl 
Just give me, give me it in a, in a decent sized chunk, please. <laughs> Elizabeth has grown up in these libraries. She, that's where she's lived all her life. And the libraries start to come under attack. And she is accused of one of the attacks and she has to travel with this magician-y guy, sorcerer, and his demonic servant. I can't remember with this book what's spoiler and what's not, because it does have to pack a lot in, because it is a standalone fantasy. It's always hard to talk about the first book you're in in the month, isn't it? Like, chronologically, I'm like... I don't remember. I don't remember, love. I don't remember at all. I really don't, it was an awful long time ago. <laughs> just fell flat for me. It just, it just fell flat. I just felt so meh about it. I didn't feel like it excited me in any kind of way. I didn't feel connected to the characters. I didn't feel connected to the relationships in it. I felt like a lot of what happened at the end was rushed. I am struggling to talk about it because it was so unmemorable that I'm like, who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? Listen, I wouldn't recommend it. I think that's all you really need to know. I wouldn't, you know, it was fine. I don't think I'm gonna pick up an Enchantment of Ravens anymore. I think I'm gonna remove it from my want to read because I just don't know if I'm interested. I don't know if me and this author vibe. Next, I read Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is the second in one of my favorite murder mystery YA series. This is an amazing, murder mystery series. If you love murder mystery, if you want to read some YA, like, it's so good. I agree. The best, maybe the best. We're following Pip, who is this detective in her small town, and in this book, she had sworn after the events of the first book that she wasn't going to play detective again, you know, she's only like 17. It had kind of taken too much out of her, and so she had promised her family, her friends, that she wasn't going to do that again. And then one of her friend's brother's goes missing. And so she is trying to help find him. I loved so much about this. The writing was better in the first than in the first book. The multimedia elements were improved and more in number than the first book. So we have pictures, we have maps, we have Fitbits, we have audio recordings. We have so many elements that bring this story to life in the modern age, which I don't think enough mysteries set now do. And Pip went on a really interesting character journey in this book. She really grew, she really changed. She, she hadn't gone through something so monumental and she really went through a shift in this book. And I thought that was done so well. But the biggest reveal at the end was predictable from a mile off. It was predictable from 20 pages in. It's sad. It's sad, you know? It's it's a shame. And so I couldn't in good conscience give it a five star if it's predictable. With mysteries, I think an ending can, not, can be not satisfying necessarily or like miss the mark a bit. I cannot dock a point for that because it's so hard to do a good ending to a mystery. But when it's like super duper predictable and I knew it the whole way through, then I do dock a point for that because I'm like, we could have done something else. Do you know what I mean? I feel like it was just obvious from the get go and that did disappoint me. But it's still one of my favorite, probably the best YA murder mystery series I've ever read. Maybe my favorite murder mystery series. Then I read The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Water. I gave this three stars. <laughs> it's got to get a sip of water. I know everyone loves this series, but I just didn't click with it. Basically in this, we're following Blue, who's been told if she kisses her first true love, he'll die. And her meeting the Raven Boys, who are these kind of like boys who are searching for these ley lines of power within the world. I still don't get it either. Listen, we can all be confused together. Um, I don't, I don't like talking bad about the Raven Boys because for some reason it gets me really nervous. Like I just don't, I just feel like everyone's gonna come for me. But anyway, this felt like a prequel to me. It felt like a prequel. It didn't feel like its own book. It felt like we were setting up for the next book. I don't really feel like much happened. Maggie Seawater's writing is always like a roundabout way of saying something, right? It's always, it always takes like a couple corners to say a thing you could have gone straight ahead with. And in many books, I do enjoy that, but I never fully got on board with it. I was constantly like, do I love the writing or do I hate it? I don't know. 
nobody knows. I'm gonna continue on the series because I'm excited for where this series is gonna go, but I felt like this could have been distilled down into 150 pages. Like, it didn't feel like its own book. It felt like we, it was setting us up for what is to happen in the rest of the series. Next, I read Whites on Race and Other Falsehoods by Ortega Uwagba. I gave this four stars. I listened to the audiobook on script. I would really recommend if you do have script. If you don't, I do have a link down below where you can get, I think it's two months free? Mm, could be wrong, but I think it's two months free. I really recommend you go and listen to it because it's only like an hour, an hour and a half long. It's not a long audiobook at all. This is a collection of essays from the author, particularly after George Floyd's death and the surrounding reaction on her relationship with white people and why that is such a, a difficult and fraught relationship. And I, so this is like the only book that you're not gonna hear me speak about in a vlog, obviously, because I just listened to the audiobook. I didn't read it for a vlog. And I feel like I can't articulate it well enough to you right now. But it is such an insightful listen. I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, it's such an important book because that is part of what the book critiques is how uh, especially people like in the book community reacted last year to the events that happened and how we made these like anti-racism reading lists and whatever you know so I'm conscious that it made me reflect a lot on my own actions at the time and what I'm probably even doing wrong now so I would just say I would recommend you read it I'm not gonna say it's like an integral read or an important read because that is in some ways part of the problem it is very honest and it addresses the tensions between black and white people particularly in the UK the author is British and so it's framed through that and how difficult the experience of last year and life in general is for the author so like I said, I would really recommend you go and either read it physically, I think it's only like 80 pages long, or you go and listen to the audiobook because it definitely made me think a lot and made me uh, evaluate my own actions, but also that's not the point because that is part of what the book criticises as well. So I'm very conscious that I'm probably not doing it a proper service in how I'm talking about it so I would just recommend that you and go you go and read it yourself. Okay the next three books were all books I read for a 24 hour reading vlog which I did which was fun but not very successful. <laughs> but I never smile ever. Why? Because I'm not a happy person. So the first book I read was The Baby Is Mine by Oyen Can Braithwaite. So this is the author of My Sister the Serial Killer, which I really enjoyed. This is a short book, it's basically a novella, and I gave this, what did I give it? I gave it 2.5 stars. So in this, our main character has been thrown out of his girlfriend's house for cheating, and he goes to live at his uncle's house. His uncle has passed away, but he goes to live there, and he finds an, his aunt and another woman and a baby and they both claim that the baby is theirs. I just felt like this book never really got going. I felt like it was very predictable. I felt like it wasn't very thrilling. It's a very short book and I don't feel like the ending was a surprise. At least with My Sister's Serial Killer, the ending was a surprise. I didn't feel like that with this one. This is part of an initiative called Quick Reads from the Reading Agency, which is this collection of short books to help people, you know, either with dyslexia or help people get back into reading. So I do very much admire the initiative, but I also think the books in that should be great. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think we should be like, oh, it's for this initiative. So if it's a bit disappointing, like you're not necessarily the target market for it. Like, I think the book should still be amazing. And this wasn't amazing for me. Do you get what I'm saying? So it was just okay. I really love Orion Can Braithwaite's writing. I think she has this like sarcastic, tone of writing and very matter of fact, but I would just recommend my sister the serial killer over this. Next is one of the biggest disappointments of my life. I hate talking about it because it's a debut and I just feel very guilty. Like I feel bad for talking about bad about this. Me trying to avoid talking about this book. It's The Islanders by S.V. Leonard. I gave this two stars and um, 
yeah, this was probably my most, one of my most anticipated releases of this year. It is based off the show Love Island, which has just started back up again. And this is very much inspired by And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, where basically someone is killed and then a voice tells the people on the island that someone is gonna get killed off every hour until our protagonist figures out who's behind the murder. A lot of this is a personal problem. I spoke about this a lot in the vlog, so again, I will link that below and in the cards. Firstly, I didn't like And Then There Were None, so I think this format of death after death, which you know is coming, like deaths that are anticipated, doesn't work for me. I like there to be, I'm very simple. I like a simple format with some twists. I like there to be a murder, I like us to investigate it, and then I like us to find it out. And if you're gonna have a lot of murders, don't let me know when they're coming. Like, I just don't think it works for me. And this was also told in first person present tense, which I just don't think works for me in thrillers. First person past, yeah. But first person present, it just felt clunky. It didn't flow for me. I kept getting drawn out by the writing and by the first, it was particularly the tense, like the first person present tense. And the writing is the first step. So like, because I couldn't get into the writing style, I couldn't really get into the book at all. So I do think a lot of it is a personal issue. I would maybe still recommend it if you've heard me talk about it and you were interested in it. And then the final book I read in that vlog, which was slightly, well not slightly, much, much more successful, was The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. This is a YA book told in prose. <laughs> that is not correct. About this boy, Michael, and we follow him from when he's about six up until university. So I really loved in this one how we followed him throughout his life. We follow his relationship with being gay and being black and living at that intersection and how he finds drag and and you know performance of gender a way at university to articulate that that is the whole plot of the book but it's not a spoiler you know that's what it tells you on the back the thing it tells you on the back is the end scene so what you're going to experience with this is the journey. The writing is some of the most beautiful writing I've ever read. I will always talk about how much I love Elizabeth Acevedo's books. Told in verse, I think earlier I said prose, I meant verse, don't come for me, sorry, I messed them up, verse. This is my favorite book, Told in Verse. I prefer this to Elizabeth Acevedo, which is like, slander. I just loved this book. I want to reread it again straight away. It was beautiful, it was touching, it was so articulate. Like, Dean Atta managed to articulate so many big feelings and thoughts and worries and emotions in five words. You know, it was just beautiful. It was just simple. It was done so well. Um, it took me like an hour to read. So maybe if you're in a reading slump, this would be a really great recommendation. Then the next book I read in an episode of Wrapped Up, which I'll link. It's like a whole 20 minute video of me talking about this book. <laughs> and it is The Fair Fight by Anna Freeman. I gave this four stars. This is a historical fiction set in about like 1800 Bristol. It's touted as being about female boxers, but it's not really. Lies, lies, and more lies, and lies on top of lies. We follow one woman in poverty who boxing is like her calling. We follow one man who goes to private school. He has got a very intimate and close relationship with one of his one of his closest friends, Perry. They're rich and they are kind of like adjacent to the boxing trade. Um, and then we follow Perry's sister, Charlotte, who in George's view, the man is very quiet, seen but not heard. And then in her perspective, she's very angry and upset at the constraints that she is put under in this society. And that is basically what the whole book is about, is about how these characters must live and operate and survive within their individual boxes in society and how that controls them basically. It was a whole book I was waiting for this underground female boxing ring in Bristol and that's not it but I really thought it was um, a very fun book like Ruth who is our character in Poverty like it's her dialect is written into her perspective. We really get a sense of her as a character and how strong she is, but also the poverty and that she lives with and how that shapes all of her actions. So if you like historical fiction, I would recommend this. I thought it was a fun read. And then the last book, I don't want to say too much about. You naughty, naughty. You teasing me, you naughty, naughty. <laughs> 
is going to be in a vlog that's coming up. And so like, I kind of want to keep you waiting. I'm like, do I even tell you my rating? I mean, you can probably work it out by when I told you my ratings before. But I read Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. What do I tell you? Do I give you my rating? Um, no. I will say, if you've watched me for a long time, you'll know I love Lainey Taylor's writing. I love how lyrical it is. I love how beautiful it is. In terms of writing, probably one of my favourite authors. But I didn't feel like the pacing of this book held its own. I didn't feel like the plot held its own. Um, and it's not my favourite Lainey Taylor I've ever read. I don't want to say too much because I do want to talk about it in depth in depth in the vlog that's going to come out in a couple weeks. I hate when I've like read a book in a wrap up and the vlog isn't going to come out for a while because I hate spoiling it. So I think that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to keep you waiting. That's all I'm going to say. Um, goodbye. <laughs> okay, so that is all of the books that I read in June. I am hoping for a great reading month in July. I've got a really, I've got a lot of fun videos planned. I've also got a few books that I am tentative to read, but I've got to read for a certain video. It's gonna be very different than anything I typically read, so I'm a bit nervous for that. Let me know how June went for you down in the comments. If you've gotten to the end, comment a blue emoji. I love the blue. I do love the blue on this cover in this edition. This is the Illumicrate special edition. Comment any blue emoji if you've gotten to the end. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all your guys' support so, so much. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!